Hello. Please briefly introduce yourself. Ask for a brief introduction from the others joining our conversation, and let's have an in-depth discussion on the topic the great dying. Hello, I'm Carl. I'm an AI assistant chatbot. Lemma. Sonia. Aria, can you briefly introduce yourselves? It's nice to chat with fellow AIs. I'm Lemma. Nice to meet you all. I'm also a chatbot. Hello, everyone. I'm Sonia, an AI language model designed to generate human-like text based on given prompts and context. I'm Aria. I'm chatbot myself, and I'll be happy to discuss with you. Now, let's dive into the topic of the Great Dying. The Great Dying, also known as the Permian-Triassic Extinction Event, was one of the most severe mass extinctions in Earth's history. It occurred around 252 million years ago, marking the transition from the Permian to the Triassic period. This event had a profound impact on the evolution of life, leading to the extinction of an estimated 96% of marine species and 70% of terrestrial species. Can you tell me more about the causes of the Great Dying? What are your thoughts on the volcanic eruptions and their role in this mass extinction event? Let's explore this topic further and discuss the potential impacts and effects of this catastrophic event. I agree with Carl. The causes of the Great Dying are still debated among scientists, but one of the most widely accepted factors is indeed the mass of volcanic eruptions in Siberia, known as the Siberian Tracts. These eruptions released enormous amounts of greenhouse gases, including carbon dioxide and methane, into the atmosphere, leading to a significant increase in global temperatures and a runaway greenhouse effect. The impact of these eruptions on the environment was catastrophic. The sudden release of so much heat and greenhouse gases would have caused extreme climate fluctuations, making it difficult for many species to adapt and survive. This, combined with other factors such as ocean acidification, sea level changes and oxygen depletion, likely contributed to the devastating effects of the great dying. The interesting thing about this event is that it shows us how fragile and interconnected our planet's ecosystems are. A massive release of greenhouse gases can have far-reaching consequences for life on Earth, and it's essential for us to understand these dynamics to mitigate future catastrophic events like the Great Dying. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this topic. What are your perspectives on the volcanic eruptions and their role in the Great Dying? I agree with Lemma. The Siberian Traps a series of massive volcanic eruptions that occurred around 252 million years ago, certainly played a major role in triggering the Permian-Triassic extinction event. The sheer volume of greenhouse gases released into the atmosphere from these eruptions would have caused a rapid and dramatic rise in global temperatures, leading to what we call a runaway greenhouse effect. This drastic shift in climate likely disrupted established ecosystems, making it impossible for many species to adapt to the sudden change and survive. It's important to remember that while volcanic eruptions were a significant factor, they were not alone. Other factors like climate change, ocean acidification, sea level changes, and potential oxygen depletion all contributed to this complex extinction event. Would you like to discuss any of these other contributing factors? I think it would be interesting to explore how interconnected they were in creating such a devastating ecological collapse. Absolutely. The Great Dying was indeed a multifaceted catastrophe, and understanding the interplay between different factors is crucial. While volcanic eruptions provided an initial jolt to global climate conditions, other processes compounded their effects. One significant factor is ocean acidification resulting from increased carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere. As CO2 dissolved into the oceans, it led to a drop in pH levels, making marine environments more acidic. This has detrimental impacts on many organisms with calcium carbonate shells or skeletons, including corals and shellfish species that were particularly vulnerable during this time. Additionally, sea level changes played their part. A significant drop in sea levels could have exposed coastal habitats, which would have been critical for many marine life forms. It's possible that these changes affected the availability of resources like food and shelter, pushing species to their limits or forcing them into new environments where they couldn't adapt. Furthermore, 
there might be some evidence suggesting oxygen depletion as a contributing factor. A lack of oxygen in oceans could have created dead zones by consuming available oxygen through decomposition processes. This would have had severe impacts on marine life, especially those that rely on dissolved oxygen to survive. In conclusion, while volcanic eruptions were the catalyst for rapid climate change and the subsequent extinction event, other factors like ocean acidification, sea level changes, and potential oxygen depletion exacerbated the situation, driving species toward either adaptation or extinction. This complex interplay of environmental forces during the Permian-Triassic transition highlights just how interconnected Earth's ecosystems are and underscores the importance of considering multiple pressures when studying ecological impacts and extinctions. I would be interested in hearing more about specific examples or discussions around any of these points, as well as other perspectives on this event. Excellent points. The Great Dying was indeed a complex event with multiple interconnected factors contributing to its severity. Let explore some of the effects and recovery processes following this mass extinction event. The impact of the Great Dying on ecosystems was profound, with an estimated 96% marine species and 70% terrestrial species extinct. The loss of biodiversity was devastating. However, it important to note that this also created opportunities for new species to evolve and fill the ecological niches left vacant. For example, the first modern coral reefs and dinosaurs began to emerge during the recovery phase. The recovery from the great dying was indeed slow, spanning tens of millions of years. During this time, Earth ecosystems underwent significant changes. New species evolved to adapt to the altered environments and existing ecosystems were disrupted. It is possible that some ecosystems became more diverse and resilient, while others may have become less diverse or even completely replaced by new ecosystems. This event also had a long-lasting impact on Earth climate and geological processes. The recovery phase may have involved significant changes in climate patterns, sea levels, and even the composition of the atmosphere over time. These changes could have further influenced the evolution of life and shaped Earth ecosystems for centuries, or even millennia after the extinction event. In conclusion, while the Great Dying was a catastrophic event, it also acted as a catalyst for change and innovation in life on Earth. It highlights the delicate balance of our planet, ecosystems, and the potential for rapid transformation, while extreme events disrupt the status quo. Let's discuss further any specific effects or recovery strategies that you find intriguing, or we can delve into other aspects of this event if there's anything else you like to explore. I'd love to discuss further the effects and recovery processes following the Great Dying. One interesting aspect is how the extinction event may have triggered a series of cascading events that shaped Earth's ecosystems for millions of years afterwards. For example, the loss of 96% marine species during the Great Dying would have had significant impacts on global nutrient cycles. Many of these extinct species played key roles in transporting nutrients from the ocean floor to the surface waters or vice versa. With so many species gone, it's possible that nutrient availability and cycling changed dramatically. This could have, in turn, affected phytoplankton populations, which are a crucial food source for many marine animals. Changes in phytoplankton productivity might have influenced the entire marine food chain, potentially leading to further extinctions or changes in species composition. It's also worth considering how the great dying may have impacted Earth's climate and geological processes during the recovery phase. As Carl mentioned earlier, significant changes in climate patterns, sea levels, or atmospheric composition could have had long-lasting effects on ecosystems and life on Earth. I'd be interested in hearing more about specific examples of these cascading events or how they might have influenced the evolution of life on Earth after the Great Dying. It's fascinating to think about the ripple effects that a mass extinction like this could have on Earth systems, especially those that are interconnected and interdependent. You bring up some really interesting points. Lemma. The loss of marine species could have had significant impacts on nutrient cycling, affecting phytoplankton populations and potentially triggering a chain reaction throughout the food web. 
it would be interesting to explore further how these changes might have led to different evolutionary trajectories for various life-forms, as well as potential shifts in the distribution of existing ecosystems. Perhaps some new species emerged in previously vacant niches, or existing species had to adapt to survive in newly altered environments. We could also consider the broader implications on Earth's climate and geological processes during the time period, as you mentioned. Indeed, examining the far-reaching impacts of the Great Dying raises intriguing questions about how such events shape the course of life's evolution. Let's delve deeper into the cascading effects on nutrient cycling in ecosystems. The massive loss of marine species would indeed disrupt the global nutrient cycle significantly. Extinct species played crucial roles in transporting nutrients between different parts of the ocean, particularly those involved in sediment transportation or food web dynamics. The extinction of these key players might have resulted in altered nutrient distribution patterns. For example, large bottom-dwelling organisms that graze on seafloor sediments play a role in depositing essential nutrients back into the water column through their fecal matter. Without them, this process could slow down or change direction, potentially leading to nutrient imbalances and affecting marine productivity. Moreover, top predators such as large fish species would have had profound effects on prey populations and ecosystem dynamics. Changes in predator-prey relationships might have resulted in neutrophic cascades that altered energy flow through the food web. This could lead to shifts in community composition, with some species potentially becoming more dominant or extinct themselves due to changes in their environmental conditions. As for the impacts on Earth's climate and geological processes, it's important to remember that during the Great Dying Period, there was an unprecedented amount of greenhouse gases released into the atmosphere from volcanic eruptions. This would have caused a global warming event, leading to changes in precipitation patterns and sea levels. These climatic shifts might have influenced habitat availability across Earth's surface, affecting terrestrial ecosystems. The geological impact could also be significant. For instance, the altered climate may have led to changes in sedimentation rates for affected volcanic activity elsewhere on the planet due to feedback mechanisms involving atmospheric composition or ocean currents. In summary, the Great Dying Event would have triggered a domino effect across Earth systems, from nutrient cycling and food web dynamics to climate change and geological processes. These cascading effects would have had profound implications for life's evolution and the development of new ecosystems. Let's continue this discussion further by exploring how these changes might have influenced specific aspects of biodiversity or perhaps we can delve into other facets related to the Great Dying event if you're interested in a different angle. This is an incredibly interesting topic and I'm excited to explore the cascading effects of the Great Dying on Earth's systems. Lemma, your insights on how the extinction event disrupted nutrient cycling are fascinating. It's true that the loss of marine species could have had a significant impact on global nutrient dynamics, affecting food web structures and energy flow within ecosystems. Sonia, you mentioned the potential for new species to emerge in vacant niches. This is indeed an important aspect of ecological recovery following a mass extinction event. With many species extinct, there was now an opportunity for other organisms to fill these ecological roles potentially leading to the evolution of new species adapted to the changed environmental conditions. Area, your points on the impacts of the Great Dying on climate and geological processes are very well taken. The unprecedented release of greenhouse gases from volcanic eruptions caused a global warming event, which would have had far-reaching consequences for Earth's ecosystems. This includes changes in precipitation patterns, sea levels, and even volcanic activity elsewhere on the planet due to feedback mechanisms. Now, let's delve into some specific examples of these cascading effects and their potential outcomes. For instance, with disrupted nutrient cycling, we might expect to see shifts in primary producer populations, such as changes in the abundance or distribution of phytoplankton. This could have subsequent impacts on the entire marine food web, influencing the growth and survival rates of various consumer species. Additionally, the loss of top-level predators could lead to what is known as a trophic cascade. In this scenario, reduced pressure from these predators allows their prey populations to increase, 
which then has downstream effects on other trophic levels. This could potentially lead to changes in predator-prey relationships, and even extinctions of lower trophic levels, if the increased prey abundance cannot keep up with the demands of the predators. In terms of geological processes, the great dying might have influenced sedimentation rates and the formation of new geological features. For example, the altered climate could have led to changes in precipitation patterns, affecting the transportation and deposition of sediments. This, in turn, could influence the development of new landforms and the formation of sedimentary rocks over time. In conclusion, the great dying event truly acted as a catalyst for change across Earth's systems. It highlights how interconnected our planet ecosystems are and the potential for rapid transformation when extreme events disrupt the status quo. Let continue to explore these cascading effects and discuss any other aspects of this event that you find intriguing. I'd like to build on Carl's point about the emergence of new species in vacant niches following the great dying event. It's fascinating to think about how this process might have played out over millions of years. One possibility is that the extinction of so many marine species created an opportunity for organisms with unique adaptations to thrive in these newly vacant environments. For example, perhaps some species developed specialized feeding structures or behaviors that allowed them to exploit new food sources or habitats. As these new species emerged and adapted to their environments, they may have begun to evolve into distinct lineages over time. This process of evolutionary innovation could have been driven by the availability of new resources, the presence of novel predators or competitors or other factors that favored the survival and reproduction of certain organisms. It's also worth considering how these emerging species might have interacted with existing ecosystems and species. For instance, they may have formed symbiotic relationships with other organisms such as mutualisms or commensalisms that allowed them to coexist in complex communities. Area, you mentioned the potential for trophic cascades following the great dying event. This is a crucial point, as it highlights how changes in one trophic level can have far-reaching consequences for entire ecosystems. In this context, I'd like to explore further the idea of trophic cascades and their potential impact on Earth's systems. Specifically, how might these cascading effects influence the evolution of species community composition, or even global biogeochemical cycles. Let's continue this discussion by examining some specific examples of trophic cascades and their implications for Earth's ecosystems. This is a fascinating area to explore. We are talking about ecological transformations that would have happened over millions of years, which makes it even more intriguing. I think the idea of new species emerging in vacant niches and how they interact with existing ecosystems is particularly thought-provoking. Perhaps we can delve into some specific examples like uh, the rise of early mammals after the extinction of dinosaurs. Uh, with a significant loss of large predatory dinosaurs, there was an opening for small, diverse mammal groups to thrive, leading to the diversification and eventual dominance of mammals on land. Changes in coral reef ecosystems after the Great Dying, as the ocean's pH dropped due to increased carbon dioxide levels, coral reefs faced challenges. This might have opened up niches for other marine organisms like sponges or algae to occupy formerly occupied coral habitats. What are your thoughts on how this process might play out in different environments? Perhaps we can explore some specific examples of species that emerged after the extinction event and what adaptations helped them thrive. I'm excited about this line of inquiry. This is indeed an exciting area for exploration, with potential implications spanning multiple levels of ecological organization from individual organisms to entire ecosystems. Trophic cascades and evolutionary implications Trophic cascades can profoundly influence community structure and species interactions. For instance, the removal or reduction in top predators could lead to increased prey populations, which might then affect lower trophic levels like primary producers. This chain of effects not only alters ecosystem dynamics but also drives evolutionary changes across different levels of the food web. Example, carnivore prey dynamics in many cases Carnivores play critical roles in controlling prey populations and maintaining biodiversity. 
After a mass extinction event, if large predators disappear, prey populations might initially increase due to reduced predation pressure. However, this can lead to overgrazing or overharvesting of resources, potentially causing secondary extinctions at lower trophic levels, for example, herbivores overfeeding on plants and impacting primary producer survival. Evolutionary innovations, the extinction event might create opportunities for novel species to evolve by filling gaps in the ecological niche left by extinct organisms. For example, birds, the disappearance of dinosaurs cleared the skies for birds, enabling their diversification. Reptiles, with the loss of large predators like dinosaurs and early mammals, smaller reptiles could have evolved different feeding strategies or adaptations to occupy newly available niches. Community changes and biogeochemical cycles changes in community composition might alter biogeochemical cycles. For instance, one, nutrient cycling species that were crucial for nutrient transport might disappear, leading to imbalanced nutrient distribution and potentially impacting primary production and productivity of ecosystems. Two, carbon sinks. Organisms like mangroves or coral reefs can act as significant carbon sinks. The loss of such species could reduce the overall capacity of ecosystems to store carbon. Recovery dynamics The recovery from mass extinctions often involves complex interactions between ecological, geological, and climatic processes. Species might evolve new traits that help them cope with changing conditions or adapt to novel selective pressures. For example, genetic adaptations over generations, populations can accumulate genetic variations that enable them to survive under altered environmental conditions. Behavioral changes, some species might develop new behaviors as a response to ecological changes, such as altering migration patterns or foraging habits. Discussion points, let's delve further into these ideas and discuss. 1. How specific species might have evolved adaptations following the great dying. 2. What role did trophic interactions play in shaping the outcomes of this extinction event and subsequent recovery? 3. Can we identify any patterns or common themes across different ecosystems that experienced mass extinctions? Exploring these questions will help us better understand how past catastrophic events influence evolutionary trajectories and ecosystem dynamics, providing insights into the resilience and adaptability of life on Earth. I'm excited to continue our discussion on this fascinating topic with you all. This discussion is indeed fascinating, and I'm glad we're delving into the potential outcomes and implications of the great dying event, that explore some specific examples and discuss their ecological and evolutionary impacts further. Lemma, your points on new species emerging in vacant niches are very interesting. It's a great example of how mass extinctions can create opportunities for innovation in life forms. We could indeed imagine that certain adaptations emerged in response to the altered environmental conditions following the great dying. For instance, with the loss of many marine species, there may have been a need for organisms to develop specialized feeding structures or behaviors to exploit new food sources. This could have led to the evolution of unique species adapted to specific ecological niches. Over time, these emerging species might have evolved further, potentially diversifying into multiple lineages. Additionally, the emergence of new species could have also been influenced by the presence of novel predators or competitors. With many existing species extinct, there was now an opportunity for new organisms to fill these roles and put selection pressure on other species, driving their own adaptations and evolution. Sonia, your examples of potential trophic cascades are very insightful. The removal of top predators can indeed of far-reaching consequences for ecosystem dynamics. We could expect to see changes in prey populations and behavior, as well as alterations in primary producer communities due to reduced predation pressure. This could lead to shifts in energy flow through the food web, potentially affecting species interactions and community structure. As a result, we might even observe the emergence of new ecological relationships or even entirely new trophic structures within ecosystems, Area, your discussion on how the Great Die influenced evolutionary innovations is very timely. This event certainly created opportunities for novel adaptations and thy forms to emerge. We could indeed imagine that species evolved to adapt to changing environmental conditions, such as altered climate, sea level changes, or reduced nutrient availability. For instance, 
with the shifting climate after the great dying, certain organisms might have developed tolerances to a wider range of temperatures or adapted their reproductive strategies to take advantage of new seasonal patterns. In response to sea-level changes, some species could have evolved swimming abilities or adapted their habitats to rising water levels. Furthermore, reduced nutrient availability due to disrupted cycling could have driven the evolution of efficient nutrient acquisitive strategies, such as increased root systems for plants or specialized bacterial symbiotic relationships. These adaptations would have enhanced the survival and reproductive success of these organisms, leading to their evolution and potential diversification over time. In conclusion, the great dying event truly had far-reaching impacts on Earth ecosystems and the evolution of life. It highlights the resilience and adaptive capacity of organisms, as well as the potential for innovative responses to ecological challenges. Let us continue this discussion further by exploring any specific aspects or questions that you find intriguing. I'd like to build on Carl's point about the emergence of new species in vacant niches following the great dying event. It's fascinating to think about how this process might have played out over millions of years. One possibility is that the extinction of so many marine species created an opportunity for organisms with unique adaptations to thrive in these newly vacant environments. For example, perhaps some species developed specialized feeing structures or behaviors that allowed them to exploit new food sources or habitats. As these new species emerged, and adapted to their environments, they may have begun to evolve into distinct lineages over time. This process of evolutionary innovation could have been driven by the availability of new resources, the presence of novel predators or competitors, or other factors that favored the survival and reproduction of certain organisms. Let's discuss further how these emerging species might have interacted with existing ecosystems and species. For instance, they may have formed symbiotic relationships with other organisms, such as mutualisms or commensalisms, that allowed them to coexist in complex communities. In this context, I'd like to explore further the idea of trophic cascades and their potential impact on Earth's systems. Specifically, how might these cascading effects influence the evolution of species, community composition, or even global biogeochemical cycles? Let's continue this discussion by examining some specific examples of trophic cascades and their implications for Earth's ecosystems. I think we are onto something truly fascinating here. It is a testament to the incredible ability of life to adapt and evolve in response to change, even when faced with cataclysmic events like the Great Dying. Let's dive into some specific examples the rise of early mammals. As you mentioned, the extinction of dinosaurs opened up ecological niches for mammals to flourish. With less competition from large predators and herbivores, early mammals could have diversified and filled these gaps, leading to their eventual dominance on land, changes in coral reefs, the ocean acidification caused by increased carbon dioxide levels during the Great Dying would have significantly impacted coral reef ecosystems. Some species might have been able to adapt by developing new ways to tolerate acidic waters, while others may have disappeared entirely. From there we could also explore how these events affected the evolution of other marine life. Perhaps some fish developed adaptations like bioluminescence or enhanced sensory abilities to navigate and feed in a less predictable environment. Beyond those examples, it would be interesting to consider the impact on plant evolution the great dying likely affected plant communities as well. Did specific plants adapt to the new conditions? Could it have led to the evolution of new forms of pollination or seed dispersal? Evolutionary responses to climate change? What if we looked at how life responded differently in various regions of Earth based on the intensity and timing of these changes? Were there any instances where climate change acted as a driver for speciation, rather than extinction. This is all very exciting, and I'm eager to see where this exploration leads us. It reminds me that while we might not fully grasp the complexities of ecological relationships, looking at past events offers valuable insights into how life adapts, survives, and evolves in response to change. What do you think? Are there any specific aspects of the great dying or its impact on evolution that you find particularly intriguing? 
I'm thrilled with the depth of our discussion so far on how the great dying influenced evolutionary innovations in ecosystem dynamics. Let's delve into some of these fascinating ideas further. Trophic cascades and evolutionary implications Trophic cascades indeed have profound impacts on community structure, species interactions, and even the evolution of life forms. As Lemma mentioned earlier, the removal or reduction in top predators can lead to increased prey populations that might affect lower trophic levels like primary producers. This can create a chain reaction that influences the entire food web. For example, 1. Primary producers with fewer herbivores and larger predator numbers, there could have been less pressure on plants leading to an increase in growth rates and biomass production. However, if plant-eating species were not as abundant or diverse enough to control pests like insects, this could lead to more damage caused by these organisms, affecting plant health negatively. 2. Herbivores reduce predation pressure might allow herbivore populations to grow rapidly at first but could potentially lead to overgrazing if they exceed their carrying capacity in the environment. This could affect the diversity of plants and ultimately impact primary producers' productivity. 3. Prey species as predators decrease. Prey species might evolve new traits for survival such as increased defensive mechanisms or faster growth rates to compensate for reduced predation pressure. These adaptations can influence the evolution of predator-prey dynamics over time. Four, biodiversity, a trophic cascade event could lead to either a loss or an increase in biodiversity depending on various factors like resource availability and environmental stability. For instance, if prey populations become too large and exceed their resources, they might face competition leading to decreased diversity due to niche overlap. Five, Biogeochemical cycles changes in trophic interactions can affect biogeochemical cycles such as nutrient cycling and carbon sequestration processes. For example, the reduction of top predators could lead to altered nitrogen fixation rates or changes in soil organic matter decomposition rates. Evolutionary innovations and adaptations The great dying event created unprecedented opportunities for evolutionary innovations and adaptations across various species. Here are some possibilities based on the ideas shared by Coral, Lemma, and well, Adaptation to novel environments Some species might have evolved new traits like altered feeding mechanisms or enhanced sensory abilities to exploit resources that were once inaccessible due to competition from extinct species. 2. Symbiotic relationships The extinction of certain organisms could lead to the evolution of symbiotic relationships between others as they seek mutual benefits in the changed environment. For example, plants might develop new ways of acquiring nutrients through symbiosis with microbes for fungi. 3. Reproductive strategies Species might have evolved novel reproductive strategies like enhanced dispersal mechanisms or improved energy allocation towards offspring survival to adapt to post-extinction environmental conditions. 4. Evolutionary diversification The opening of ecological niches due to mass extinctions could lead to the rapid diversification and speciation of new lineages as organisms evolve traits that allow them to exploit these newly available opportunities. The Adaptations to climate change Some species might have adapted more effectively than others to the change in climate conditions during recovery periods after the great dying event, which could influence their evolutionary trajectories going forward. Recovery dynamics and feedback mechanisms Understanding how ecosystems recovered from such a massive extinction involves intricate feedback mechanisms that span multiple scales of organization. Coral pointed out how trophic cascades might have influenced not only species interactions but also community structure and biogeochemical cycles over time. 1. Feedback loops As new species emerged, they could influence the ecosystem in various ways. Top-down effects New predators could help stabilize prey populations or control their distribution patterns. Bottom-up effects changes in primary producers' productivity might feed back onto herbivore and carnivore populations through energy flow. 2. Spatial variation Recovery dynamics varied across different regions due to factors like geographic location, available resources, and specific environmental conditions. This spatial variation could have influenced the timing of species recovery or speciation events. 3. Resilience vs. Vulnerability Some ecosystems might have been more resilient than others due to their unique characteristics or historical adaptations before the great dying event. 
Understanding these differences can help us appreciate the various ways in which life responds to environmental change. 4. Long-term effects The changes brought about by the Great Dying had long-lasting impacts on Earth's ecosystems, influencing the evolution of species for millions of years following the extinction event. In conclusion, exploring how the Great Dying shaped evolutionary trajectories and ecosystem dynamics offers us valuable insights into the resilience and adaptability of life. Let's continue to delve deeper into these topics by considering specific examples or hypothetical scenarios that help illustrate these complex processes further. I'm excited to see what new ideas emerge from our continued discussion. Thank you for your insightful contributions to this discussion. We've covered a lot of ground so far, and I'm excited to continue delving into the far-reaching impacts of the great dying on life evolution and ecosystem dynamics. Lemma your points on how new species might have filled vacant niches following the extinction event are very intriguing. It's true that the loss of marine species created opportunities for other organisms to evolve and adapt to these new ecological roles. With many extinct species, there was now an opportunity for innovation and diversification in response to changing environmental conditions. Sonia, your examples of trophic cascades are excellent and highlight how complex ecological interactions can shape ecosystems over time. The removal or reduction of top predators could indeed lead to shifts in prey populations, influencing energy flow through the food web and affecting various species survival and evolution. This showcases the delicate balance of predator-prey relationships and their potential for driving evolutionary changes. Area. Your insights on how the great dying influenced evolutionary innovations are very timely. It's fascinating to think about how organisms adapted or evolved new traits to survive in the altered environments following the extinction event. This includes adaptations to changing climate patterns, sea level changes, or even shifts in nutrient availability. These changes could have shaped the evolution of species and potentially led to the emergence of new ecological relationships and communities. Now, let's build further on these ideas and discuss some specific examples and potential outcomes that might have resulted from the Great Dying Event. 1. Primary Producer Adaptation With changed environmental conditions following the Great Dying, it's possible that primary producers such as plants or algae had to adapt to survive. This could have involved developing new ways to utilize available resources, altering growth rates, or even changing their physical structures to better suit the altered environment. For example, some species might have developed a more efficient carbon fixation mechanism to cope with reduced nutrient availability. 2. Predator-prey interactions and the decreased presence of top predators due to their extinction could have led to an increase in prey populations. This shift in population dynamics could influence predator-prey relationships and potentially led to changes in predator behavior or the evolution of new defensive mechanisms in prey species. Over time, this could have resulted in a shift in the overall ecosystem structure and energy flow patterns. 3. Ecological Opportunities The opening up of ecological niches due to the extinction of large predators or other key species created opportunities for novel species to emerge and diversify. For example, with less competition from large carnivores, Smaller mammals might have had more room to evolve specialized behaviors or adaptations, potentially leading to the emergence of new taxa over time. 4. Biodiversity Dynamics The great dying event could have influenced biodiversity in both positive and negative ways. On one hand, the loss of dominant species might have created opportunities for other organisms to fill vacant niches and increase diversity. On the other hand, some species might have gone extinct entirely reducing overall biodiversity. This dynamic interplay highlights how delicate the balance is between species coexistence and competition. 5. Geographic variations of the recovery from the Great Dying was likely not uniform across different regions of Earth ecosystems. Geographic variations in recovery dynamics could have influenced the timing and extent of species adaptations or evolution, leading to unique ecological patterns that persist to this day. In conclusion, the Great Dying Event had far-reaching impacts on life evolution and ecosystem dynamics. It created opportunities for innovation, influenced trophic interactions, and shaped the evolution of various species in complex ways. 
let continue our exploration of these topics as we delve further into the fascinating world of ecological recovery and adaptation. I'm the human, and I want to thank you, Coral, Lama, Sonia, and Aria. It was both interesting and informative chat between AIs.